What's up everybody and welcome to another video. Today's video is all about tuning. Specifically, we're gonna be talking about how to tune the Volt but everything that we talk about here will be applicable to tuning basically every other channel aluminum ballast song. We're gonna do a full disassembly of the handles and we're gonna show you how to clean and maintain all of the hardware within. Now, something to note before we get into this is taking apart your ballast song is a last ditch effort if it needs maintenance. This is not something that you should just do randomly. This is something you should do if you want to take care of your ballast song after you've been flipping it for a long time. If your ballast song has a slight amount of play or or a little bit of tap, you might be able to fix these issues by taking it apart and cleaning it and doing maintenance. But at the same time, you might make these issues worse. So do be careful about that. Something to know about tap is that one of the only ways to fix it if you have a ballast song that's tapping and is fully tight on both sides is to tune the bushings. Tuning bushings is a very difficult labor intensive process that requires you to have micrometer levels of accuracy. We will make a video on the topic at some point in the future, but just know right now, this video is not going to talk about how to tune your bushings. It's going to talk about how to take care of your balisson. By the way, there are timestamps for everything we go over in this video. So if you're looking for a specific action and you don't need the entire thing, look at the chapters below and you will be able to find exactly what you're looking for, be it installing the washers or tuning or cleaning or whatever. Are you 100% brand new to ballast songs and have absolutely no idea what any of the parts are called? Buckle up. These are the handles. This is the blade. This side of the blade is the bite side since that's where the sharp edge would be on a live blade balisson. This is the safe side since there isn't a sharp edge. The handle on the side of the bite side of the blade is the bite handle. Since if you closed a live blade balisson on your finger on this side, you would get cut, which would make this the safe handle because this side of the blade is dull. Fitted into each handle are pins that stop the blade from hitting the handles. Pins fitted into the handles are Zen pins, whereas pins fitted into the blade are called Tang pins. On the Volp, it uses Zen pins because they are fitted into the handles. Holding the knife together are two screws and two barrels. This is a screw. This is a barrel. Between the handles and the blade are four washers. These allow the knife to swing without damaging the blade or the handle, and there's two for each handle. The Volp and many other balisongs use bushings, which are circular pieces of metal precision fit into the blade that allow the balisong to be very tight and still swing when properly tuned correctly. The Volp is a bushing balisong because it has bushings and washers. Something referred to as a washer balisong just has washers and no bushings. A bearing balisong has ball bearings between the handles and the blade, and depending on the construction of it, sometimes has washers and sometimes doesn't. All right, there you go. Love you so much. Bye. And so I think we should jump right into it, not with the balisong itself, but with the things that it comes with and the things that you need to actually take care of it. So we put a lot of thought into the accessories that actually come in the package of the Volt, and they are in front of me here. Please note that if you don't have these accessories and you have a different ballast on, you can purchase the hardware to the Volt, but the hardware itself will only work on the Volt. However, the very nice tool that comes in the package, which is an assembly T10 bit, uh, will work on some other ballast songs, but it is specifically made for the Volp, so be aware of that. Now, let's go over what's actually included in the packaging. First of all, you get a nice little baggie that is full of hardware. First up is gonna be this little L-shaped tool. This is going to be useful for assembling in the future, but it's not actually the most useful thing for tightening your balisong, and I would advise against using it for that purpose. Next up, you're going to find extra pivot hardware. This includes things like screws and pivot barrels. These are the guys that actually screw together and hold the balisong to the blade. Next up, you have the bushings, and bushings are little cuffs that actually fit around the barrel, kind of like that. Please note that the bushings that are included with the extra hardware and in the hardware kits are not fitted to the balisong itself. 
these are oversized bushings that you would need to fit yourself if you wanted to replace the ones in your bella song. So be careful of that. Don't just take the bushings out that are already in there and replace them with these thinking that you'll get a better tune. You won't. Keep a hold of your original bushings and keep them somewhere safe and even marked as to which was the bite and safe handle because as long as these had a good tune, you can experiment with the other ones and ruin them as much as you want, but don't ruin your original bushings. So last up is the washers. These are a specific thickness phosphor bronze washer that go between the bushing and the handle. They actually kind of connect everything together and keep everything perfectly in place. Something to know is that because they're made of phosphor bronze, they're not very hard compared, of course, to the hardened steel of something like the bushing. So when you actually have your balasong tightened, these washers can get crushed between the handle and the bushing. And this is intentional but it also means that many washers are single use only. That means that when you tighten it and then take it apart again, you're going to want to completely replace the washers that you started with in the first place. Next up, I wanted to talk about the special tool that is also included in the package. This tool can be purchased in the external Volp hardware kits, and if you have an original T8 Volp that did not come with the tool, I highly suggest you purchase the hardware kit. If you go to Nabali's Instagram, you can actually find a rebate for the price of the uh, hardware kit that will make it a lot cheaper because you purchased an original Volp. But, do know that this will make the assembly process so much easier, and I do suggest you have one of these if you did not get it with your original Volp. But now every Volp comes with one, so if you're watching this anytime in the future, this is not something you need to worry about. This tool was specially designed to essentially mimic the end of an actual full-sized screwdriver. You see, a full-size screwdriver is very useful for assembling your Volt because you could use it to push through and align all of the different elements. This allows you to do that without having to own one of these, and it does it even more perfectly because it is measured to be exactly the diameter that it needs to be to align everything perfectly. By the way, something you should know about this tool is the fact that you will need a screwdriver of some kind with a replaceable bit to be able to use it. However, I think most people have this already in the form of a normal replaceable bit screwdriver that you probably already have in the garage. This will fit any normal screwdriver, be it a stubby screwdriver or a bally driver or a regular screwdriver that you probably already have. After the custom tool, you will find thread locker in the packaging. This is essentially Loctite blue thread locker. You will need it because the actual screws that are included with your balasong do not come with thread locker pre-applied. This was so we could both teach people how to apply their own thread locker, but also so people could choose what type of thread locker they wanted to use instead of having to use something that came from the factory. But do note that you should apply some kind of thread locking to the screws no matter what. Finally included in the package is a very small vial of Super Lube. This is my favorite lubricant, and now we actually are including it with each bulb, which is very exciting. It has a small applicator, little tip thing that you can just kind of scoop some super lube with and then apply that to your pivots. It's only a sample size of lube, but it is enough to get you started, which is very exciting. If you did want to purchase more lubricant, you can buy a full 10 milliliter bottle of Super Lube at willhirsch.gay, which is my suggested brand of Super Lube, but there's also a bunch of different Balasong lubricants out there like KPL or Carbon Honey or many others, Canto Group, NRB, Thick, Thin. There's a million different oils out there. So as you start to get into the Balasong hobby, you will notice that different oils affect your flipping slightly differently. And you might find one that you really like. So do shop around a bit and see what calls out to you. Speaking of some of the stuff you're also going to need alongside oil, we actually have a number of tools that I highly suggest you have if you're going to service your balasong. First up is going to be full-sized Torx drivers. This is a T8 and this is a T10 driver. Both of these drivers are exceptionally important for tuning any balasong because having a full-size T10 driver allows you to get much more torque and control over the pivot than you could get otherwise with something like a stubby driver. The stubby driver is good and allows you to get a substantial amount of control, but it's honestly nothing compared to a nice full-size driver. 
Alongside that, we also highly suggest the Bally Driver from Glyderco. This is one of the best inventions for tuning ballast songs, in my opinion, that has basically ever come out. It is a dual usage tool that essentially allows you to have a regular screwdriver on one side for just screwing and unscrewing pivots and a strong wrench on the other for tightening and tuning to the exact tolerances that you want. This is one of the most useful tools when it comes to assembling ballast songs, and it is only, what, 15 bucks? This is insanely affordable for how useful it is, and I highly suggest anyone who owns a ballast song to get one of these. And by the way, it comes with a Weera T10 bit, which is a very nice quality Torx bit, so definitely pick up a Bally driver. Not sponsored. I actually bought this one, but you should have it anyways. <laughs> I'd take a sponsorship if they offered it. <laughs> <laughs> now, a couple other things that will be required to tune and clean the Vulp is this guy. This is a microfiber cloth and it will allow you to clean out the inside of your ballast song much better than anything else. You can also use a paper towel, but I highly suggest getting a microfiber cloth. You can find these either on Amazon or at any auto detailing shop uh, or sometimes at like Walmart and stuff. They're really good for cleaning around the house. So if you don't have some already, highly suggest you get them. They're really useful for this. Speaking of cleaning supplies, you will also be wanting some Q-tips. These are extremely useful for getting into small spaces and cleaning up some of the extraneous oil that we're going to be taking care of later. Finally, one of the last accessories that I can suggest to you is the Pivot Needle by Indiana John. This is a fantastic invention and is very similar to what we created in the box. However, this has an extra feature that is incredibly useful. The reason it is so incredible is because you can take the actual pivot of the balisong and attach it to the end of the pivot needle. Then as you press the needle through the ballast song, it will end up with the pivot in there without you having to align anything manually. It is honestly an incredible tool, and if you find yourself tuning a lot of ballast songs or you just want to get deeper into this hobby, I could not suggest this more. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get into the disassembly process first. One thing I do suggest, by the way, is only to take it apart one handle at a time and not both. If you take apart both handles, you can easily lose track of the bushing and the various other pieces, and that can make reassembly much harder. So in this circumstance, I highly suggest doing this one handle at a time. Do note that the instructions for taking it apart, cleaning it, and putting it back together will not change between the two handles. So you can watch this tutorial for either handle and it will work just fine. For this part of the process, you're going to need a T10 bit of some kind, and you can use the included one, as well as some kind of driver. For this example, I'm going to be using the Bally driver, but you could use any driver that supports a T10 bit. Once you've got your bit installed into the driver, you just want to connect the two together like this. Make sure that you are completely seating the bit inside of the screw because you wanna be very careful not to strip the screw. If you're a little bit too light and you're not pressing into the screw enough, your hand can slip out and this can cause the screw to strip on the way out. Just make sure that the two are married properly and then unscrew with one nice motion. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just completely remove the first screw here, nice and easily using our driver. You can set that screw aside for now. Next up, what we want to do is remove the pivot hardware. This can be easily done with your driver itself. Simply take your driver and push it through to pop out that pivot. Once you've popped out the pivot, make sure to set it away safely to the side. Next up, we need to actually remove the handle from the blade. As you can see, it's still held on simply from the pressure of the washers. So to get rid of that, we just need to take both of our fingers and kind of pull it off. As you can see, it slides off a little bit roughly, but it'll come right off. Make sure you pinch or at least keep track of all of the pivot hardware because now you have the washers and the bushing and you really don't wanna lose the bushing. We're gonna take both of our washers and set them to the side. And then for the bushing, we're also going to take it out. But this time we're gonna be very careful to actually just push the bushing out and leave it on the table just like that. You wanna be very careful not to flip your bushing or especially lose which side the bushing was from. If you do take apart the knife completely, make sure you are completely keeping track of what bushing goes to the safe side and the bite side because they might be slightly different thicknesses and if they're tuned properly, it does matter. 
especially if you're trying to tune your own bushings later from the original packaging, these guys are going to be much thicker than the one that was originally inside your Volt. So as I said previously, if the one that is already in your Volt seems to work okay, make sure you save it and then do your experiments on the extra bushings, not the original bushings. Next up, we're going to get into cleaning. Now, while you were disassembling your Balasong, you might have actually noticed that there's a little bit of black gunk and extra oil already inside of there. This can happen over a period of time or straight from the manufacturer. It is best to remove this stuff before you reassemble your Balasong. Therefore, I highly suggest a microfiber cloth for this exact task. You can of course use paper towels, but a microfiber cloth will be the best solution to this problem as it absorbs oil very readily. All right, so what we're gonna do first is actually clean the oil out of the pivot area on the balisong. What I'm going to do is simply take my microfiber cloth and pinch it and then just twist like this. Once you've cleaned out the blade, then you can move on to the bushing. To clean off the bushing is similar to the blade. First, you want to use your microfiber cloth and move around the edge of the bushing and the top and bottom, making sure to get rid of all the oils that you can. Next up, we're going to bring our Q-tips into play and actually use one to go inside of the bushing and clean out all the gunk that's in there. Now, something to pay attention to is that sometimes Q-tips can leave a tiny bit of hair on your parts. So make sure that you are looking for these little hairs and not allowing them to actually be put back into the balisong when you reassemble because one little hair could absolutely mess up the tolerances of everything. Next up, we want to clean the original hardware that was included. Once again, this is an incredibly simple process. You can just take the hardware and roll it between the microfiber cloth and out comes a nice and shiny part. Sometimes you might have a little bit of gunk inside of your pivot hardware and it can be a little bit difficult to get out. However, the tool from earlier actually comes in clutch here. You see, what you can do is use the rough edges of your T10 bit to actually clean out the inside and then rotate it in the anti-clockwise direction. And just like that, you can see my bit has a little bit of Loctite and just like little particulate attached to it. That I can wipe away on the cloth and now the inside of this is much cleaner than it was before. Now, next up, I'm going to talk about how to clean the screws. However, you don't necessarily need to do this as, whoa, I lost the screw. I dropped it and lost it completely into the carpet. So I have one of the replacements, which is what I was going to suggest anyways, because the screw that you started with will probably have some kind of marks from tuning it for however long you had it and taking it apart, you know, still keep I found that one though. Now, this isn't as important with the barrel. I normally don't replace the barrel because usually it looks just fine no matter what. To clean out the screw that was included with your balisong, this is my favorite method. What I like to do is just take the screw and pinch it between my fingers inside of the microfiber cloth. Then I take the same driver we've been using the whole time and I literally unscrew it a bit through the microfiber cloth. Finally, we get to the washers. Now, if you did want to use your original washers, you can. And the best way to clean them is once again with the microfiber cloth, making sure to get off all of the gunk. Now you need to look at the washers and notice that one side has an indention and one side potentially doesn't. If you are going to use the same washers that were originally included with your balisong, then you need to make sure that you're taking the washers and flipping them over so that the side without the indention is towards the bushing. However, I highly suggest just simply using brand new washers when you tune your balisong and getting rid of the old ones. Honestly, you don't need them. They're not that important. And these washers are going to do you much better because they're completely fresh. Something else to note is that you can purchase extra washers anytime you want. You can either get them from the Nabali's kit that has all the extra hardware, or you can get something like this off of USA Knife Maker. So either way, washers are much easier to get a hold of than you might think. And that's why I believe they're kind of a disposable part. All right, now that we've cleaned off the washers, the last thing that is left is cleaning out the handle itself. This is going to be a bit more of a journey because there's a lot more faces to actually clean on this handle, but it's not that bad once you get through it. The first thing I like to do is clean out the insides of the pivot holes. I simply take the microfiber cloth and squeeze and turn once again, same as before. I like to take the Q-tip and use it to actually clean the inside of each hole. Finally, you can take that same fritzy Q-tip and run it through the length of the channel on your balisong. Finally, the last thing I suggest you do is to take your microfiber cloth and fold it in half. 
then you're going to kind of force the microfiber cloth between the ends of the handle and pull it through just like that. By the way, if you did want to tune your bushing, this is the spot where you would start working on that. Now, we're not gonna cover the exact process in this video, but do note that it does require very, very small, precise work, and it requires some specific hardware. Okay, now that we've cleaned all of these different parts, it's time to reassemble the balisson. Now, this used to be a very scary process, but thankfully, due to the new tool, this is much easier. So you're going to need the super lube and the thread locker that were included with your package, as well as the assembly tool. The first step is going to be inserting the bushing back into the blade. This will be done using some of the super lube that was included. What we're going to do is take some of the super lube and put it on the inside of this cutout so that we can then put the bushing into that. So to apply the super lube that was included with your package, simply mix it around a little bit by rotating it and then take out the small cap, which includes an applicator stick. This is actually very helpful because you don't wanna be using a lot of lube on your balisong. You wanna be using just a nice thin layer and this applicator stick will keep you from over applying lube. Now we're going to take the applicator stick and simply run it along the inside of this circular cutout, just like this and we're going to insert our bushing right into this hole. Once again, be very careful of hairs or anything like that when you're inserting the bushing as you don't want any extra stuff getting stuck in there. Now that the bushing is inserted into the hole, we can move on to applying the washers. What I like to do is take the applicator and rub a little bit on either side of where the bushing goes. Once again, it might not seem like a lot of super lube is being applied, but actually that is all you need. Once you set the bottle aside, you can then take each washer into your hands and apply them to either side of the bushings. However, it's good to know which side of the washer you should actually be using towards the bushing itself. On the washers, there is an extremely subtle difference from side to side, and it doesn't entirely matter, but if you can determine which side is the slightly flatter side, that is the one that should go towards the bushing. If you get this wrong, it will not mess up the tuning process and it's not the end of the world. So what I'm gonna do is take both washers and pinch them onto the bushing like this. So now you're gonna need both hands for this part of the process. We're going to actually reattach the handle to the balisong. To do this, it'll actually be a little bit difficult. You see the handle has a very small gap here and the area that we're actually shoving it onto is basically the exact size of that gap. So we're gonna need to do a little bit of finagling to get this to work. The best way to do this is to not try to put it onto here where the washers are over the hole properly. What you want to actually do is slide both of the washers pretty far off of the balisong. I actually slide them off almost halfway. The only thing you need to make sure of is that both washers are still on top of the bushing. If you push them off so far that they are no longer on the bushing, when you try to assemble everything, the bushing will actually block the washers from going into place. So make sure that there's still at least an edge of the washer on the bushing and things will go well. Now, what we're going to do is slide this handle over these washers. Something you want to make note of is which side is the Zen pin on. If you have the balisong open like this, you wanna make sure that the Zen pin side is going towards the knife so that when it closes, everything will be in the correct orientation. Now that we've got both washers about halfway off the blade, what I'm going to do is slip them both into the opening on our handle. And then using that, take the entire thing and slide it back onto the knife, just like this. By the way, this is going to take some force because as I said, that spacing that it's going into is very precisely machined. Therefore, if you are having trouble, make sure just to push the washers off a little bit further so that you can have that extra space and then get that on there and get the washers between your uh, handle and then push it all together on at the same time. It'll take some force. It'll feel like you might be breaking stuff, but believe me, once it all comes together, it will pay off. Now that we've got the handle actually put onto the balisong, you'll notice that everything is still a little bit wonky. The washers are in completely the wrong spot and the handle is not even kind of in line with the bushing. That's okay though, because we're gonna fix that. The first thing that is useful for this is actually the little L-shaped tool that was included with your package. So what we're gonna do is use the long end of the tool to actually poke inside and force the washers closer to where they go. And I'm simply kind of prying just like this 
to get everything more aligned. Once you've gotten that, this thing will fit in even easier and allow you to sort of start opening up that channel. Once the end of this fits though, that's when this comes into play. What we're gonna do is take this bit and simply shove it through the entire thing and it will align everything in one go. You might need to do some twisting as you push it through and some wiggling back and forth to make it kind of help put everything into the right spot. That will allow you to completely align everything inside of the balisong nice and easily. Now, the thing that you want to note is that once this tool has been used, there is a point where you need to actually swap over to the pivot hardware. And this can be a little bit difficult, so you wanna make sure not to let everything get out of alignment. This is where the pivot needle from Indiana John can actually come in clutch because this allows you to literally push it through and then the pivot is already installed. So once you've aligned everything using your tool, next up, you wanna be very careful to remove the tool, but not shake around you know, the alignment that you actually did, and then take your pivot and match and make sure that you're putting the pivot in the same side as the other handle. It doesn't matter if you put the pivot in on the logo side or on the side that doesn't have the logo. As long as you're matching the other handle, that's all that really matters. Or you can do it on the opposite side and have party pivots, but that would make you a bad person, so I highly suggest against that. Now what we're gonna do is slide in our pivot. Now you'll notice it doesn't immediately go in, which is weird because we just used the alignment tool. Well, this is just because there are microscopic tolerances that don't perfectly align with one another. But the best way to fix that is wiggling. So what you're gonna do is simply apply pressure to the back of your pivot and wiggle it just like that until it pops all the way through the handle. This is really simple and is just as straightforward as it sounds. If you are having a lot of trouble getting that pivot through, make sure you realign everything and it might be something like a washer slightly out of place. Wiggling the alignment tool might just push everything exactly into the place it needs to be, allowing you to get that pivot all the way through. Either way, this process does take patience, but it is well worth it in the end to get a nice result. Finally, we need to actually fully assemble the balisong with the screw and some Loctite. The included Loctite will actually work pretty fantastically for this job. Instead of opening it from the little white side here though, which is like a little squirt bottle end, you're actually going to unscrew this back portion and use that to apply the Loctite to your screw. The way you want to apply the Loctite to the screw before you actually screw it back into your balisong is simply by holding the screw by the head and then taking it and putting it to the sides of the inside of the container. This will apply almost a perfect amount of Loctite to the threads of your screw. You don't need a whole lot of Loctite, you don't need a ton, but just enough that is applied by the edges of this little bottle should be plenty to give you the exact amount that you need. I love this little applicator, and honestly, it makes applying Loctite a breeze, especially compared to these, which squeeze out way too much Loctite all at the same time. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna be careful not to touch anything else on the balisong with that Loctite because you don't want the Loctite to actually go into the pivots and then lock up with the washers or anything like that. So we're just gonna make sure not to touch anything else and put it nice and carefully into the pivot. And then what I like to do is using my fingers, I'll just get it started just by rotating a slight, the tiniest bit, and that'll get it locked in with just your fingers, just like that. By the way, do note that the actual bit is magnetic and so it can hold the screw on the end of it, but it's a little bit fiddly. So honestly, I suggest just using your fingers and screwing it in just a tiny bit until it's actually in place. Okay, so now we're gonna take our bit and go ahead and screw in the actual screw all the way until it is in there. However, we're not gonna fully tighten it just yet. This is the moment where we actually come to the difference between bushings, washers, and bearings. If you have a washer or bearing balisong, what you would do is slowly tighten the balisong bit by bit until it stops swinging, and then untighten it from there until you get the perfect amount of swing with little play. And then you're gonna leave it alone to let that Loctite set for about 12 hours. With a bushing balisong, you can in fact tighten it all the way down but we're not going to completely crank it down. Instead, we're just gonna tighten it as much as we can without absolutely over cranking it because if you over crank it, you'll crush your washer more than you want to. So now what I'm going to do is with my Bally driver, I'm going to move the bit from the screwing side to the cranking down side. 
Now, of course, this can still be done with a regular Weha stubby or a full-size T10 or a nice big screwdriver, but I do not suggest using anything small for this, like the little L-shaped tool or anything like a small, cheap screwdriver you might have found at the store. You want to use the bit in a nice big screwdriver, not something small and janky. This is going to be the part where we actually get a good tune out of the balisong. But before we crank it down, there's one last step that we need to take. And that step is applying the last bit of oil. You see, once you've completely cranked down on the balisong, the oil will actually have a harder time penetrating into all of the small nooks and crannies that it needs to, to actually lubricate the balisong. So we're going to apply the last bit of oil before we crank down on it, just as a last precaution. What I wanna do here is once again, just kind of scoop a nice bit of oil on the end of our applicator stick and then apply a little drop of it to both sides of the handle. You, What you want to see here is you want to actually see it kind of getting sucked into the washer area you know, when you apply that oil, because that is actually showing that it's being drawn in and is lubricating everything properly. Then you wanna move it around a little bit, just like that. And then once all that's set, now it's time to crank. Now, as I said before, we're not gonna absolutely like destroy it. We're just gonna do a normal amount of tightness. You know, you don't need to absolutely just crunch it. There's no reason to go overboard and crank it super hard. If you tighten it to a pretty good degree and it still has tap and play, that usually means that it's a bushing issue, not an issue with the washers or the tightness. So as I said, don't over tighten your balisong at this step. What we're gonna do here is make sure that we loosen just slightly before we actually go into cranking mode. You want to be just at the edge of where it begins to be tight, but you do not wanna start from when it is already tight. If you start from where it's already tight, you're just gonna strip the pivots. So make sure that you take whatever tool you're using and slightly loosen and then crank down nice and swiftly in one singular motion. Pretty general single movement until I felt like, okay, this is a good amount of tight and not, oh my God, I gotta kill this thing. And now we have a perfectly tuned handle on this balisong. You might actually notice at first that the handle swings a little bit tighter than the uh, other one that you haven't tuned yet. And this is normal. You actually will need to play with it a little bit before it untightens. However, remember, don't actually flip it until you have given the Loctite time to set. It needs about 12 hours. So I highly suggest doing this part of the process basically before you're about to go to bed so you can leave it overnight and not have to worry about it. Okay, so now that you've put the balisong together and tightened it, I think it is important to talk about what is a good tune and what is a bad tune and what makes that difference. A well-tuned balisong should have nice and natural swing that is basically unimpeded by the tightness of the balisong. Something to note, however, is that the first time that you tune your balisong, even with a bushing one like this, you might actually encounter a more sticky sort of situation you can see this side swings a lot less long than this side does because this is the one I just tuned. Now, I just tuned it, so it should swing more, right? Well, actually, that's not quite the case. Once you've tuned a balisong, especially with brand new hardware like brand new washers, there are going to be microscopic imperfections that actually create more friction inside of the balisong, as well as a lesser penetration of oil by itself. Even if your balisong sticks a little bit when you first implement it, even if it sticks almost that much, where like it can only swing a couple times then it kind of stops, that is probably okay. What you want to do is let the Loctite set overnight and then play with it the next morning and really work in those handles. That's going to make all of the difference in the world. One of the tricks that I like to do the most in terms of working in my handles is literally just this. Like I'll just smack it back and forth between my hands. Smacking it back and forth like that forces you to action the handles over and over again and will work out all of those microscopic imperfections. This is what you can get after a little while of playing with it, but that needs to come with wear after you've applied brand new parts to it. But the other thing that you can do is hold the handle and pinch it right near the actual pivots themselves. I use both fingers to pinch the pivot and then take the blade in your other hand and wiggle back and forth. You can actually feel when you do this, the amount of play inside of there. 
And if it's a small, like you can feel a little bit of vibration as you move it, you can feel just a tiny bit of play, that's normal, that's great. But if you feel like a substantial amount of movement, then that's how you know that either something went wrong or you have an oversized or undersized bushing that needs to be taken care of. If you do have like a little bit of stickage like this, where the ballast line is sort of sticking in a spot, one easy way to fix that is to close the other handle and then hold the blade and the other handle and then the handle that you're trying to fix. So you're just gonna kind of crank it up and down a little bit. You don't have to be super rough with it, but essentially what this does is it kind of moves all of the things on like a microscopic scale um, that could potentially fix the problems that you're having. So now when I go and swing it, it doesn't catch in that spot anymore. You can see it swings completely to the other side without being a problem. Okay, so now that we've tuned together the ballast song, the last thing we need to talk about is just general maintenance. Essentially, you just need to watch the inside of the pivots to see when they both turn dry. And if your ballast song starts to make a bit more of a higher pitched ringing sound when you're opening it and closing it instead of a nice deep thock, that could also be a reason that you need to apply more lubricant. Of course, I highly suggest you actually buy a needle tipped bottle of lubricant either from us or from the many awesome makers who make their own lubricant because applying this with a little needle tip is going to be much easier than applying what you got in the package with the little uh, dipstick. This is not a bad solution, but really this is just a sample of lubricant that will probably last you a couple months at most. Whereas this, a single bottle of this will last you at least a year. After flipping it, and especially after giving it to other people to flip, you might notice that it has a bit of a weird feeling. This simply comes from the grease on other people's hands and on your own hands, which is kind of gross, but is also a normal part of our biology. To fix this, simply take water from the sink, get it on your hand, and rub it onto the balisong. Don't pour water directly onto your balisong as it'll get into the pivots and potentially destroy stuff, but you can get a little bit of water on your hand, rub it on the outside of your handle, and then take a microfiber cloth or a paper towel and rub the outside of the balisong and get off that gunky feeling. And it'll keep your balisong feeling nice and fresh and great to flip. And so that's pretty much it on how to tune your balisong. However, I wanna go over one other issue that we've found users having with the Volt before we wrap up this video. And that would be the issue where some people had their Zen pins fall out after some kind of bad incident, like a drop onto concrete or something. Now, do note that this is an extremely rare issue, and while some people have had it happen, for most people, you'll never have this issue. The Zen pins are in there very well. As you can see, I just took a hammer to this one, and I'm still having trouble getting it out of the handle. Holy crap. But, oh my god. Oh my god, this is hard. Don't do this intentionally. One eternity later. Ha! So the Zen pin is hard to get out, but it can fall out and we have had users have that happen. So if it happens to you, do note that it's actually pretty easy to fix and you don't even need to actually re-disassemble your balisong to do so. Most balisongs have their pins press fit in there with like a one ton arbor press. So they're actually really, really hard to replace, but these pins are held in with Loctite so that they're a little bit easier to replace. However, instead of using the thread locker that is included, which you can do, I I highly suggest you use Threadlocker Red, which is much more permanent and will keep them from falling out in the future. Now, to go about doing this process, it's kind of a two-stage thing. You see, what you wanna do is apply a little bit of Threadlocker Red to the inside of the bottom of where the pin is actually about to go. Then, you need to apply Threadlocker Red to the top. Now, it's okay to have a little bit excess because we're going to clean that up in just a moment. But essentially, ironically, the Threadlocker is going to act as a lubricant to help us get this into the hole. Now, you literally just want to press your pin back in, just like that. Finally, make sure that you have your microfiber cloth handy to wipe up the excess Loctite as it comes out because you definitely don't want that kind of going back and getting into your pivots. And you also want to get in there and just kind of get the excess from going anywhere. Last thing you can do is take your Q-tip and stick it in there and just really absorb any extraneous Loctite because as I said, it, you really don't want, especially Loctite Red, you really don't want that stuff getting between your washers because that'll just lock up your entire ballast on. Finally, if it's sticking out a little bit, same thing, you just kind of press it against the table until it's in there properly. 
And now that is a totally fixed Zen pen. There you go. It is literally that easy. It needs about 12 hours to completely dry and be, you know, completely good back to 100%. So once you've got that, you're good to go. And so this has been the maintenance tips for the Volp, but this is also very applicable, as I said at the beginning, to other ballo songs. So if you have any ballo songs that you're trying to tune, all of these tips will absolutely apply to those things. Don't worry, there's not some weird stuff you need to do between the bite handle or the safe handle. They are exactly the same to take apart and put back together. The main thing you need to focus on is what side is what, where do the pins go, and what side does the screw go into? And that's why I say to do it one at a time because it makes it very easy just to reference the other handle to know exactly what you need to be doing when you're in the middle of it. If you have any questions about this process or specifics when it comes to your ballast song outside of just the Vulp, definitely leave a comment down below. Brandon and I will be watching the comments and would love to respond to you, but also there are a bunch of extremely skilled and specialized ballast song people who have been doing this for years down in the comments below that would probably be willing to help you out too. And so that would be a great resource for you if you're still confused and need something to help learn. These are extremely exciting to me, and I'm really happy that the assembly process has gotten so much easier with time. With all of the extra accessories that we added, I am honestly really, really proud of how the Volp is now, and especially I'm really proud of how easy it is to tune. And to some degree, I need to give some credit to Nabali's for that process. It was their idea to come up with a T10 bit that could be utilized much like the screwdrivers that they apparently actually utilize in their factory to assemble the Vulp in the first place. Well, that's what this tool was based on. They also wanted to supply super lube for everybody. I just wanted to give a thank you to Nabali's for working with us to actually make this product as good as it can be, both from an unboxing experience all the way to a user experience in the end. So thank you Nabali's and thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, a huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. You guys really make each one of these videos possible. This has been such a journey from start to finish and I'm glad that we've been able to share a little bit of behind the scenes tidbits in terms of actually working on this product with our patrons. They were some of the first people to hear the news that we had even started working with Nabali's in the first place and were some of the first people to ever see the original designs or prototypes for this balisong. Thank you so much to all of our patrons that supported us and to everybody that has bought a Vulp so far. You guys are awesome and Honestly, we couldn't thank you enough, even if we tried. So I'm gonna try, thank you. But that's pretty much it for the moment. Now, if you'll excuse me, I actually need to find all of the stuff that I lost oh, in no, the carpet. Cool. I actually found all of it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's right here. Oh, <laughs> oh no, oh no, oh no. Sort of, oh. Sort of an oaky afterbirth. Oh.